Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Workshop, featuring Duelist. In the previous episode, we made a few edits to the deck, and I feel like our edits are going out okay. Kyra Winterblade's deck seems to be very interesting. Um, this Void Hunter might not be the correct play, um, because again, it just falls into the same category as our Fenrir Warmasters. What can we put? What can we put? Maybe a, um... Yeah, 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 maybe, maybe. Because I, I'm thinking that maybe a Dispel might work wonders. Skywing. <laughs> when this minion survives damage, it returns to your action bar. Back to the office. Okay, um... I mean, technically, that's a constant threat that deals 2 damage every time. Not that good, though. Did we just put Sapphire Seer into the deck? Because, um, this Void Hunter is a bit sketchy, in my opinion. Yeah, I think we need to put in the Dispel. Double light bender, sir. So, I mean, that does technically make the deck more expensive, but again, it's just a bunch of rares and a bunch of commons and a bunch of basic cards. So we'll see where it takes us. Hopefully, to the moon. That was a pretty good game, by the way. Um, so yeah, let's just play a few more games and try to understand what are we doing, what we're doing, who are we doing, uh, why we're doing, when we're doing. Kara Winterblade's art seems very interesting as well. Um, she has this like really awesome looking gauntlet in the left hand. And she doesn't seem to have a right hand in the art, does she? Does she? Maybe this is her right hand? If so, why is it like slumped over? Oh wow, this queue is taking a long time. Maybe people don't like me. Oh, so many friends. I've been playing for so long. Oh, there we go. Dengar? <laughs> it's like, were you trying to type Rengar, but like missed the R by accident? Okay, um... We're not gonna need this. We're probably not gonna need this. Yeah, okay. And I still got one of those back anyway. So are we going to play the Double Primus Fist turn 1? Yes, we are, because having units on the board is very important for this deck. A Jaxi, that's very good. A Flame Blood. Oh, that's a tough decision. I want to force him to leave a few units alive. Fine, let's get- yeah! Plus four- you know, in the usual- back when this was a permanent buff, Maybe that would have been like an amazing play, but as it is now, it's not that good. Saber Spine Tiger is an easy answer to Jaxi. You know, just attack the Jaxi, then wherever the new unit spawns, just Tiger on over there and uh, kill him. Yeah. Gloom Chaser. So this seems to be a swarm deck, which isn't necessarily bad. He's gonna trade this. Where is it going? By the way, given a rush unit and a unit in the center of the board, so that whether that unit's your general or something like that, you can uh, always get to a ranged unit. So no need to worry about that. Since we're ru since he's running this deck, the main goal is to not let him have a bunch of units on the board. We have to be in the center for that to work. Because one, two, yes, we have to be in the center for that to work. So might as well uh, offer some area denial by blocking his path. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this, and that ends the turn. We have some board presence, and he's gonna be. F I'm not gonna attack into him uh, because I want him to waste the turn, quote unquote, uh, dealing with this guy. But of course, needless to say, if he does end up summoning a Black Solus, we might be in some trouble because I've mulliganed away all my answers for that card in hopes for a better early game. A 
spell jammer. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa, Nelly, a spell jammer. Okay, so do we just kill it? No. We buff all our units in our hand. Do this. Just go face. Look, if you're gonna give me spell jammer uh, charges, then by all means, I'm an aggressive deck. Well, you know, like not as aggressive as aggressive should be, but quite aggressive nonetheless. So this is seven, nine plus nine damage. That's 18. I'm one off lethal. This means that he has no Black Solus in his hand. Or, no, wait, sorry, he only has five mana, so that's a ritual banishing. That does take up all of his mana, though. He's gonna trade, yes. Oh, he traded with me. Okay, so he finally understood. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. Not yet. But yeah, this is a good play. That gets rid of that. That gets rid of that. Okay. The ultimate fear is coming next turn. It's gonna be Black Solus. So likely the play is gonna be drop Black Solus here. And then um, Shadow Spawn. Or if it's a 7 drop, it's gonna be... Uh, good old... Uh, Spectral Revenant. But it's more likely going to be the Black Solus play. I'm... Oh, he only chose to summon one thing. Interesting. Well, we can kill this. That's a fact. And I believe we should. Even if it ends up eating away a lot of our life. Yeah, it'll end up eating away a lot of our life. But sacrifices must be made. This thing's gonna be like a 5-7? A 5-8, sorry. <laughs> That's dangerous. This is a lot of damage. Like, a heck ton of damage. So, if he finds no way out, there's gonna be no respite for him. Of course, my biggest concern is always that he just finds a way to remove everything for free and then whatever. He's probably gonna dispel everything or something like that. That's fine, I just need to deal 7 damage to his face. Wow. What was I- what was I just saying? Ah. Uh. And don't tell me he has Shadow Dancer. Oh, come on. Every time. Every single time. I lose now, by the way. Unless we find a way to buff. Oh. Um. So what we're aiming for is a tie. Ah, that Shadow Dancer turn. Well played. Oh, Spectral. All right, well played. Fighting against Greedy Abyssian is so annoying. But I'm not going to change the deck just yet. Uh, we do have a few things to still do. Just play a few more games, it's going to be fun. So basically, this this deck, when if you're going to play it, just concede the Abid Abyssian matchup. I mean, don't literally concede, but like, don't feel bad if your Abyssian matchup doesn't end up with you winning most of the time. Because most of the time, that's not going to be the case. 
Uh, this Dex Abyssian matchup is quite poor, as you can see from the uh, from our experience. So this is a really good turn one, uh, mostly because it allows us to trade into whatever two drop he generates, uh, allows us the allows us some flexibility as well next turn, and that's pretty good. Or he can just do that. Sure, same same difference. Oh, he's running a wings. Ah, I want to run a wings too. So we cryo, draw into. Yeah, okay. We're keeping this entire hand, and then just going to kinetic surge it. So the play next turn is kinetic surge sojourner, or kinetic surge maw. Um, hopefully he has no big four drop like a hailstone or a fun steel defender I do apologize if I'm like swallowing a lot um, I don't know why but it's like it just happens sometimes it's just a quirk that I have I guess I think like the saliva just built into your mouth while you're talking a lot so you have to just eventually swallow sometimes um, yeah anyway If he... This is probably a Provoke. Or an Akari... What? That positioning was so wrong. This gives me a golden opportunity. To have access to 5 mana this turn. Nobody expects the Maw. Maw's really good in this deck. No. Though the pressure's on me. Okay, that was also a slight misplay because now he can just free Warbird and the Maw. Oh my gosh, these small misplays are gonna be the end of me. I mean, they're literally going to be the end of me. Oh, but look at this! 4-7 Provoke! So good! This is just effectively a strictly better Hailstone at this point. Oh, that was my mistake. That was my mistake. That was a big mistake. Um, that warbird. Hopefully, he just summons a small drop that gets easily. He's going my face. Oh, my face. It hurts. Ah, the pain. I mean, technically, he doesn't have lethal just yet. Ash method. You're you're gonna be too slow this game. This is rough. Yeah. Okay, that's it. That's the entire turn. Next turn, I hope he trades. Kinetic power. Unlimited power. This music's pretty cool. Like the ominous uh, background singing. Or just random choir children, I assume. Oh, he did trade. Excellent. Hey. Oh, wow. He's spending a lot of resources for that. He's not going to be able to hit me. So, no unit. If no unit, me happy. <laughs> that sounded so weird. If no unit, me happy. Well, there's the unit. This is a tough choice. Oh, we're so close to lethal, I think. Because this is a 4, this is a 5. Wait. Yeah, that's 5. 
plus four, that's nine. But we're one off. And there's no way to get that one. Okay. This is a conundrum. Okay. I know this might seem a bit weird. But I think this is the play that will give us the highest win chance. I would normally have just gone for face, but... Okay, next turn we definitely have a big advantage of winning. Oh, did he find a way to lethal me? Double flame blood. Well played. This is the power of Flame Blood. Flame Blood is a really powerful unit. Okay, so what lost us that game was me not going face enough. If I had one extra damage, I would have gotten him. I think I kept it too slow of a hand, but we'll see. Ash Mephit. Ash Mephit's not doing so hot. See, he's just getting mulliganed a lot, and that's not good. We just want... Oh my goodness. Blood to your alchemists. You're probably more useful than I thought you were. But anyway, that pretty much does it for this episode of The Workshop. If you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, do put them in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to answer them. Without much else to say, thanks for watching and good night.